Welcome back everybody. As you remember in part four, it was running a little bit long so I cut it short and I was showing you a preview of the speaker. So let's get to repairing that speaker and we'll do a little bit of the cabinet work also. Take a look at the speaker. A little dirt down here but uh, if you'll remember when we first inspected it the grill cloth was torn and you can see we're going to have to do some repairs there. I thought I heard uh, some rumbling or some rattling, so I think we can I think we can probably patch that. Right now I'm going to put a piece of cardboard on it so it doesn't get damaged anymore. Let's see if we can patch this bad boy. After looking uh, saw another little slit right here but got a pretty good slit here I don't know how far down it goes it goes almost to the voice coil wire and then it comes up into the surround itself now what I'm gonna do or the, the suspension I guess you call it what I'm gonna do is I took a coffee filter and I ironed it try to get some of the things out and then I'm going to try to get a general shape in I'm going to make a T a slanted T and I'm going to tear it that's got a good circle to it so let's see if I can tear a T I tore the top in the same arch and you want to tear the paper and maybe I can show you why to get the camera see those little fibers and you'll want to pull them to get even more and those little fibers reach out and the glue attaches it and it like fingers goes out over it and reinforces it. Let's see if I can tear this the shape I want it. Okay, that's kind of the shape I want it. Let me run my fingers through the speaker again. Again, that sounds like I did it. I didn't do it, I promise. I have before, but not this one. But I want to try to make that conform up here and just take that all the way down. And I'll probably have to tear that off there just a little bit. And then we'll take care, we'll take care of this side a little bit later. All right, I think that's gonna go good. So now I'm gonna just start pulling to get those fibers. Well, did I mess it all up right there? No, I think I'm still good. I think I'm still good there. But I wanna pull those fibers. It may not look like much, but it ought to be, it, it makes it so much stronger. You see those fibers now. Mix a little glue and put this all back together. Let it dry. Okay, I've mixed a little bit of the same glue I do veneer with with just a little bit of water. And I'll put it on. Now this these speakers typically absorb this. But I want to get a fairly decent coat on here to start with. And I don't want to lose my orientation. Just a little cheap brush I got from a cheap paint brush. 
bought it in a pack of about 50. I'm about out. And what I'll do is I'll paint this. Being sure not to get any down in the hole. Because you want that to move. Okay. Now this out on the outside, we may end up reinforcing it from the back side, and that's okay if we can get to it. If we can get to it. But this is not really absorbing. It's almost like it's kind of waterproof. But it'll, it'll all take it up. Now, yeah, what I like to do is I like to paint, paint this filter too. And sometimes I even, if it's a small patch, is I s stick it down in the hole. Let me do that. That's probably the easiest way to stick it down in this, uh, in here. and get it soaked. Good. Give me some paper towels so I don't get it all over me. And then we'll take it back out. Now I made those Let's see if we can get this. Make sure I get it on the right way. Yeah, this is the way I wanted it to start with. As you can see, I'm working it in. Got some bubbles that I want to try to get out. And I don't know if anybody's ever done any wallpaper, but uh, you try to just get them out and you can see your fibers are stretching out and that's what you want. And down in the grooves, you want it to go deep into the grooves. And I, if you see, I'm pushing from the back side to make sure that it's attaching and getting all the bubbles out I possibly can. Care must be taken not to push it all the way through. So, you guys got the idea. I'll work off camera here, make sure I get all the flaws out of here and make sure it sticks good. And we'll come back when we get it done. All right, I went ahead and patched this down here too. <clears throat> and you can see I patched from the back side. I used some clear glue just to reinforce the back and it came through the crack so you can see it but I think it'll dry as time goes on and we'll see. Let's let it dry. As you can see I've uh, got about all the bubbles out of it and we're sitting here watching it dry just a little bit um, and uh, so uh, let's go ahead and let it dry, say overnight, what have you, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll uh, take another look at it and maybe listen to it. Okay, this, uh, this is dried, oh, we're gonna say 18 hours or so, and this, this paper is, or the coffee filter is virtually part of this cone now. I mean, it has, it has just, absorbed into it per se. Now uh, I've seen some folks paint this. Uh, this is not really a black, this is more a, a brown. And um, on the way home I was thinking about painting it. <laughs> and, uh, 
and I got to thinking it doesn't really add to the structure at all. Uh, I don't think, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but putting paint on it's not going to make it any stronger. Uh, and it's behind a grill cloth, and as long as it works and sounds good, I see no reason to paint it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So uh, give me your comments, what you think about that. But uh, uh, we'll, uh, I've done plugged it up and I've been listening to it, so it, it sounds really good. So, um, But yeah, I actually stopped and bought some uh, paint brushes to... Uh, to paint that and on the way after I bought them on the way I got to thinking I said what's it what's that gonna do for me and so I don't know Okay, I have uh, took the finish off of the cabinet. I use lacquer thinner. Brought it outside. It's dried overnight. Brought it outside to uh, uh, get some light. As usual, the top it's starting to rain a little bit. I'm gonna have to go inside. And so there won't be any <laughs> finish work other than some prep work. As you can tell, there's some dings in it. I'm going to try to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and minimize those. But I think it's probably, as I told uh, Doug, <laughs> that uh, it's probably going to have character but uh, anyway let me get it back inside before it gets too wet and uh, then hit it a lick or two with some uh, sandpaper I bought some uh, 400 grit and 200 grit okay I've uh, hit this with I uh, started out with 400 grit paper and the reason I did that is you can all if you once you get scratches in wood you can't put it back and so I started with 400 and then as I saw places that needed a little bit of extra attention I uh, I, I went to the 200 now there's some battle scars over here there's not a whole lot I can do there's the coffee cup stain that's traditional I don't know if we can cover that up with any uh, toner or not uh, I haven't washed it off yet I'm gonna take a, a cloth of, uh, of uh, lacquer thinner and wipe it down I'll show you what it looks like afterwards I took a damp cloth uh, with uh, lacquer thinner and wiped it down and you can see there are some flaws but it does have some potential we make a some pretty pretty grain there customary to have a flower pot or a coffee pot or a cigarette burn on the top and a lot of people see those specs and say, well, the customary paint speckles. If you'll double check, they may not be paint. Spider poop. There you go. Next time you're looking at it, think about that. But anyway, there you go. Won't get to do anything with it today because of the conditions. But it doesn't look that bad. It really doesn't. Um, I can come in here and patch that little piece of veneer there. 
and I hadn't decided whether to do the whole piece or just try to patch it. Remember this uh, piece that was just loose, I just pushed some uh, glue up under it, put some wax paper, and did a clamp. Now this one here, let me re reposition this. If you remember this piece was missing, what I plan on doing is taking and cutting out some of it and then dropping down at about a 30 degree angle to this point here. This, this area will be uh, painted either black or real dark uh, mahogany should cover this up real nice. Let me cut it and we'll glue it. As you can see I trimmed it out and I also cut a piece just a little bit larger and then I took a, the edge of a pencil and a piece of paper and I cut and I did a tracing to make a, a template to cut my wood with and so um, it's a little bit bigger than I had I wanted but I can trim it uh, with uh, sandpaper to, to make it fit all right I've cut this a little bit large uh, but once we get it glued and uh, in place then we'll sand it down and shape it uh, and then the black cover will will hide it all together okay just finishing up with the patch here making sure it's sanded the bottom off level with the, with that and then making sure that the seam uh, is even and just going to continue to a trick I learned a long time ago is someone told me to close your eyes don't look but feel it and you can feel the raised place instead of trying to look at it you just feel it But uh, I think that's going to work out really nice there. What do you think? Okay, this, uh, this turned out pretty good. Still got some cleaning up to do on this uh, cabinet. I want to, you know, touch up a few more areas and clean it up. I uh, got to go back and darken the, uh, the dial, uh, around the dial, and also in uh, the, the uh, speaker uh, area uh got the grill cloth ordered and so as soon as we get some decent weather to shoot some uh lacquer on this uh, cabinet we'll be just about ready to put this thing back together so we'll wrap this video up for now so from larry from the hills of tennessee thanks for watching